Hello and welcome to this short uh, introduction video about the TCAN CLA2 SDK. My name is Gary Kinkel and I'm uh, the maintainer of the TCAN CLA2 SDK. So let me guide you through this repository. So at first I, I give you some introduction, then I explain you some bits about getting started, and then I give you an overview about the repository. So, in general, the TCAN CLA2 uh, SDK is licensed under the BSD3 license, so which is a common open source license. Um, so that basically means it is free for everyone to use, and we we welcome contributors in any way. You can contribute in in many kind of ways, either by contributing issues, by contributing pull merge requests, or um, yeah, or you can just use the the um, the, the SDK. Uh, of course, free of charge. Um, the, the, the SDK is actually an alternative to, to c which is, which is the official reference implementation. And it's officially recommended for new projects um, on the .NET platform that start a CLA2 server. Um, the, the workflow, the abstract workflow to implement a server uh, in the CLA2 SDK is a bit different than in other um, reference implementations because we have basically have two roles. One is the role of a module developer that basically def develops a, a software module, um, uh, in this case A, um, that encapsulates a functionality that is hidden behind an interface uh, in this case, I, I, I mean, the, the, the naming standards on the .NET platform are usually that interface begin with an I. And then uh, from, from this interface, um, the, there's a code generator, and this takes the interface and generates a feature out of it, generates data transfer objects, and generates a code to, um, to basically expose this feature to Scylla 2. And this code is then used in uh, a CLA2 server. And this, then we have the, this other role, the server implementer, that basically assembles, okay, which interfaces do I want to expose? Um, which modules do I need to load for that? Uh, and, and what other features do I have? Um, so you, you typically reference it to CLA2 SDK without any changes, typically. And, um, and, and then maybe also uh, reference other things like if you want to to to, to have your server um, implement the, the, the locking or implement authentication authorization then you typically just reuse generic implementations of those features so there's a generic implementation for locking there's a generic implementation for authentication authorization um, or you can basically have your own cost cutting concern feature and have generic implementations of those uh, which you can just reuse um, for the client, the workflow is a bit different because what you do there is you typically start with the feature because you typically want to integrate a given CLA2 server. And that, of course, the only thing to describe the interface of a CLA2 server is a feature. And then we use the same code generator to generate an interface and also generate the data transfer objects and uh, the, the client providers. So that will generate, um, again, the interface and it will, there's, a, there's an error missing here. It will also generate a um, CLA client for this interface that basically implements the generated interface by calling into a CLA2 server. Um, yeah. And of course, this client also references the, the, the SDK, but there's also an, uh, another option uh, for um, a server integrator, and that is um, the dynamic client. So there is actually a client um, that can talk to any CLA2 server um, based on the feature description without knowing that in advance. So you and you can both uh, combine both options freely. So you can um, typically you have some features that you know at compile time, such as locking, such as authentication authorization. And for those, you typically want to have um, strongly tied clients because you know exactly what 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 those features are. And for other kind of features, like if you are limbs, for instance, and want to integrate whatever uh, servers there are, um, then you can also use the dynamic client such that uh, the, the client adapts to the specific feature that the server is exposing to, to basically make sure 
that you uh, can use all the functionality that the server is exposing. So then the next point is getting started. Um, here's also maybe a bit different. There is no need to clone the repository. So everything you need is packaged as NuGet packages and is available on NuGet.org. Um, the repository also therefore basically contains the, the actual SDK and small examples. Um, so they are not, uh, in, the repository is not intended to contain an extensive list of, of, of servers that, that basically use the SDK. It's rather um, the, 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 those servers built with the um, CLA2 SDK typically live in their own repositories, typically at the companies that develop them, at the vendors, um, and under access restriction of the company, not, not necessarily open source. Um, there's also no dedicated tools necessary. So of course, I mean, for any .NET build uh, project, you need a .NET SDK, typically uh, with the Visual Studio, uh, with .NET Core support, but you can also use the plain .NET SDK. That's also fine. I mean, you don't have any added support in that case, but yeah, um, not really much of a problem. And in case you want to generate uh, or create certificates, uh, you need OpenSSL. Um, I also want to 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 show you. Um, if you want to interact with the server, you just start it. So I um, in the other videos, I'm going to talk about how to actually create a server. Um, and um, yeah, there's a but I want to use this video also to to make you a bit familiar about what the command line interface of those servers is. Um, so typically you can actually start the server. So this is a build output of this, this project and you can actually start the server and be fine with it. So it will, yeah, it, it, it loads here. This one is, is also using certificates and, and um, running on, on the network interfaces that are available. By default, the server uses, runs discovery on all available interfaces that are up and running. It will also tell you what, what features exist. By default, the server logs into the standard output, um, but if you want to, you can change that, and I will show you in a later video how to do that. But this is not the only option. Um, you can act, the, the server actually also does have, on all servers have that, um, a few command line options. So you can always do like dash dash um, help, uh, dash dash help, oh yeah, I mean, otherwise it's, it's going to show you an error that this option is unknown, but if you do a help, then you can actually review the list of options. You see the version number here. You can also query the version number by uh, typing minus minus version. That's also, that's also fine. Um, yeah, in this case, uh, the server basically comes from that the assembly name of, of this uh, thing was, was server because I had, didn't change it. Um, but those options you can um, you can actually inv in investigate separately, namely here, you can explicitly override the port, you can specify the interface or IP address filter to be used for discovery. Um, you can specify the server UUID if you don't do that, the server will actually roll a new server ID and store it in a configuration uh, such that if you if you execute that two times, um, it will start the second time with the same UUID. But if you if you don't provide any um, UUID in the configuration, then it will basically create one. Um, you can give it an initial name of the server. Uh, otherwise, it's it's just defaulting to the server type. And yeah, we already discussed that you um, can display this help screen and display the version numbers. And to the last part, to give you an overview of the repository. So the repository is located un under the CLI2 group um, in GitLab, under vendors. Um, as I said, most of the, of the, of the co contents of the repository are basically the actual SDK. 
if you want to, you can download it and um, there's a solution that basically um, contains everything. Um, but there's also examples. So there's very small uh, example of, of, of a Hello Sila implementation. I, you see here that it's been updated to 3.1 and the current version is actually 3.2. So it's not necessarily completely up to date. Um, and there's also a, a video how to, of how to do that. And as um, in, the, in the near future, the, the video that I'm uh, recording now and also other videos that show you how to create um, certain things will also uh, appear. Currently, uh, we, we do have also a wiki where we will uh, up, uh, integrate those videos into, but you, um, this is basically the documentation that is available to you. And of course you can, um, I mean, this is an open source repository, you can contribute with, um, uh, with issues or with, um, if you want to, you can also do merge requests Otherwise, the, the packages are available also on NuGet. So if you query on NuGet the Scylla 2, uh, for, for Scylla 2, you get a list of, of, of NuGet packages um, and all those make up the, um, the Scylla 2 SDK. Yeah, and that's about it to say for the overview. There will be separate videos that show you how to interact with the, um, with the uh, how to implement certain things uh, for, for implementing a Scylla 2 server using the SDK in, in other videos, as I said. Yeah, but then I hope that you enjoyed the video and I'm looking forward that you also um, take a look at the other videos as well. And then I would be um, thankful if you create Scylla 2 servers. <laughs>